Welcome to Season 2, Episode 12, our season ender here, uh, hour-long tribute to the Oklahoma City uh, bombing commemoration for April 19th, and a uh, special part of my life for the last 19 plus years, commemorating the September 11th in Oklahoma City Exchange, where which we've had for um, almost 19 years now, and doing respective peer support activities in each other's memorials. Um, Oklahoma, we do in April, and uh, Oklahoma City folks come up to New York, and they were with us on 9-11 in September. So we've done this for almost 19 years now, and uh, have some special things on store for this episode, and uh, I want to show my girls a little bit about the history of my Oklahoma City family. A massive car bomb exploded outside of a large federal building in downtown Oklahoma City, shattering that building, killing children, killing federal employees, military men, and civilians. The chaos in downtown Oklahoma City did indeed resemble Beirut after what police believed to be a 1,200-pound car bomb ripped through the nine-story federal building shortly after 9 o'clock this morning. More than 500 people were already in their offices, and at least 50 children were in a daycare center on the second floor. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice, and it was evil. The United States will not tolerate it. And I will not allow the people of this country to be intimidated. So shortly after 9-11, the Oklahoma City uh, family members came down to the pier in uh, New York City, uh, drove up from Oklahoma to be with us in our time of need. A few months later, Anthony Gardner and myself had uh, reached out to someone named Ken Thompson, who is with the MIPT, Memorial Institute for the Prevention of Terrorism. And he had a delegation of Oklahoma City family members and survivors that were there to help us and we decided to come out there in March, April of the following year to be with them around their anniversary. So that's how this whole exchange uh, started and it continued for many, many years. And uh, a lot of folks uh, that you're gonna see in this video, John Cole, Rudy Guzman, a lot of folks were with us in the very, very beginning and have still been a part of this exchange. And uh, we're just so happy and blessed to be part of this Oklahoma City family. So we're gonna show you a few clips from the uh, one of the first uh, exchanges that we did, and let's roll that. War. They died in an attack on this country. Anthony Gardner lost his brother, his brother Harvey, computer technician to his boss, role model to his baby brother. He was more like a father to me. He was 10 years older than me and helped to raise me. Our relationship changed. He was a dad, then he was a brother, then he was uh, a friend. These are all things that we could address at a memorial yeah. rally. If like Eichen, Gardner became an activist. And I think what I think would be a winning solution is starting with the memorial and then having everything on the site that sort of reflects that theme of the memorial, dedicated to not only the people we lost, but the event itself, to teach people about what happened. Oh, say, can you see? Gardner and I can turn to the people of Oklahoma City because the people of Oklahoma City know better than most how to turn great sorrow into an appropriate memorial. Don't be in a big hurry. We didn't get ours built overnight. It was five years before the outside memorial was built. Doris Jones has been involved from the beginning. Her pregnant daughter, Carrie, was one of the 168 fatalities from Tim McVeigh's truck bomb. We have a common bond, that feeling that no one can have until you've been in that situation. When you lose someone like that from a, a total act of terrorist that you have no control of, these people just went to work and they died. In Oklahoma City, victims are individually honored by the signature feature of the memorial, the chair. Our building in Oklahoma City is a sacred ground to us. Ken Thompson and Doris Jones are among the handful of Oklahoma City victims' families that have visited New York to help families here, explaining what they went through to get the memorial that they wanted or offering a shoulder to lean on. I just want to be helpful to any victims in New York to be able to move forward, to understand that there is really life again. This year, Miller and Gardner and Eichen were part of a small delegation of New York families that attended the annual ceremony in Oklahoma City. It's truly 
really a place of, of peace and reverence. You get the sense that these people, that these spirits of these people are there. I do better going there than I do to the cemetery. I go out and, and I look at her chair at the, at the memorial and uh, I know that she's not going to be forgotten. Families with a shared experience, families able to comfort each other in a difficult time. On top of everything, I am Bob Kennedy's daughter and I need to have a space to go and to grieve him. And whatever that may be, whether it's one little brick or 16 acres, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's his space in the world. Now here's a little clip showing the beautiful Oklahoma City Memorial with the chairs uh, commemorating the 168 lives that were lost on April 19th, 1995. So let's roll that clip. Welcome back to Dads and Daughters. Uh, back in 2006, April 19th, we went there on behalf of Mayor Mike Bloomberg from New York City to join in a day of remembrance and also dedicating an urn, which uh, symbolized the unidentified remains of those lost in 9-11 and really dedicating, renewing our dedication to ensuring a safe and peaceful world for our families. So uh, let's play that clip. Dear friends, it is an honor to join with the families of the September 11th and the Oklahoma City bombing communities on this day of remembrance. The victims of the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995 and the attacks on September 11, 2001 were lost due to senseless acts of barbarism and the comfort and strength that the families of those tragedies have found in this one. Another symbolized the hope we must keep alive that working together, we can someday secure a future free from terrorism. The Oklahoma City September 11th Family Exchange is providing a vital humanitarian service in helping children, spouses, parents, siblings, and other loved ones of victims heal from the loss. In ensuring that the bravery of their loved ones of victims heal from the loss and providing a forum where families may come together for solace and solidarity, the Oklahoma City September 11th Family Exchange is a unique program that fills a great need in our country today. Today, the city of New York joins with Oklahoma City in celebrating the lives and spirits of those who made the ultimate sacrifice here more than a decade ago. Today, we reflect, remember, and renew our dedication to working tirelessly towards the goal of securing a safe and peaceful world for our children. For our children. Please accept my best wishes for a meaningful day of remembrance. Michael Bloomberg, Mayor of New York City. 
I also want to take this moment on behalf of the 9-11 families, survivors, and rescue workers that are here today to thank the Oklahoma City National Memorial for giving us the opportunity to pay respects and honor once again to the hundreds of feet lives taken on April 19, 1995. This family exchange program is in its fifth year and has allowed the 9-11 and Oklahoma City communities to forge a bond of healing, perseverance, and resiliency over the, over the years. I also want to take, we're going to present an urn, and I want to explain a little bit about what this urn represents. <coughs> As the search for September 11th victims remains continued through the fall of 2001, the city of New York presented wooden urns filled with sacred dust to the World Trade Center site to victims' families. These urns were given to next of kin in burial ceremonies at the families' assistance centers along with the folded American flag to convey the national scope of the tragedy. Today, 42% of the victims remain unidentified, and for many families, the urn is the only mortuary vessel they have. The very essence of those lost on September 11th are infused with this urn. We are honored to present this urn to the Oklahoma City community as a sign of our common bond, resolve, and gratitude. Thank you all. Thank you. <coughs> Nonetheless, we do feel a, a common bond with those of you. To a certain extent, we have shared experiences, and I'd like to think that some of those shared experiences might be uh, translated to you and communicated to you in the, in the hopes that it might help some of the heavy hearts that you bring with us here today. It uh, has been 11 years since our tragedy, and I think as you witnessed this morning, it is still very much a part of our lives. And, uh, we are very much determined never to forget what happened here, just as you and the rest of our country is determined never to forget what happened on 9-11. Thank you again for coming today, and, and uh, I'd like to think this is uh, the beginning of a, a long and meaningful relationship between the city of Oklahoma City and those communities who were affected on 9-11. Thank you all. Let me show you guys their scope. Our families, like you, uh, take one day at a time, I'm trying to figure it out each and every day, this new normal that we kind of get accustomed to. People that you've met and spent some time with, you've had great examples of people who have gone a long journey, and um, each day is a little different, and each holiday is a little harder because you, you miss that person. And so, uh, you've got great examples and great confidants and great people you pick up the phone and call, and I hope you'll, you'll do that. And I hope that as you stand on this very holy ground, you understand that we will never forget what happened here, what happened five years ago in your cities, and know that um, we're here to walk the journey with you. Um, we haven't done everything right, but we've learned a lot of lessons, and we're happy to share those with you. And to our families and survivors who have, have you know, kind of stuck their neck out and helped you, I mean, I'm proud of them because sometimes it's not easy to relive that and go through it again, and I'm proud of you guys for making that journey and for helping them. So, well, a few nights ago, we had a special Zoom version of our exchange since we couldn't be there in person this year in Oklahoma City. So we decided to have a Zoom call and we're going to play that, some uh, some clips from the uh, Zoom virtual uh, exchange that we did um, a few nights ago. And uh, we'll be with you guys in spirit in Oklahoma City on April 19th. But let's show that clip. Um, you know, how many years forward and now we're, you know, 26 with Oklahoma and 20 and 20 with uh is it 2011? What year is it now? I mean, 2021. That was 26 years. Yeah, and it's our 20 yeah, 26. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're fine. I'm a rookie, I'm a rookie, rookie when it comes to this. Hey, John. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm, yeah. I'm doing good. I'm going to miss it this year. Okay. Uh, but, well, but, you know. Next year. Or I might just come out there. Never know. But, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anytime. Absolutely. I know Sandy and I are planning on, we're looking at uh, September, uh, coming to New York, uh, September 11th, and, uh, but it's going to depend on, on the, uh, you know, if there is a surge, you know, what the numbers look like uh, is going to play a part in it, and hopefully, yeah. hopefully things will be better by then, you know, you fly-in, and then also uh, the numbers itself in New York. That's, hey, Jay. Uh, my... <laughs> hey, Jay. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Jay. 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 Hey, Jay
<laughs> Hello, Anthony from Oklahoma City. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm well. Good to see Thank you. you. Good to see you. How's life in Oklahoma? I tell you, it's a beautiful day yesterday, 78 degrees. I was out on the tennis court. But Ooh, today, nice. today it's uh, cool and a lot of wind. So Sounds like cool. Jersey weather. Yeah, rain the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we wish we were all here in person to see each other, but it's, I'm glad that, you know, we finally, I'm figuring out Zoom myself, like all of us are in the last uh, couple of, uh, in the last year, but it's, uh, that at least we can do something because we can't be there physically, but hopefully, like I said, we could have a couple of you guys up in New York uh, with us in September. I know a lot of our anniversary plans, as Anthony can probably elaborate or very much in flux, but we'll do the best we can. I know. Oh, so good to see you. Mwah. 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 You got one for everybody on the call. Yes. <laughs> I was working on it. <laughs> well, we invite a lot of Oklahoma City folks. I know that, uh, you know, some may pop on. It's only 802, but, uh, you know, John Cole and Rudy Guzman, I think, have been with us from the very, very beginning. I actually on the invite, I had a link, and if any of these seen, you can check it out later. But it was some pretty rough footage of me actually going to Oklahoma City for the first time in March of 2002. Hadn't seen this documentary that the BBC did um, on, I guess, Oklahoma City or the 9-11. I don't even remember what uh -huh. of it was, but really raw seeing like how where I was then and where I am now and uh, probably that's why I haven't Ooh. seen it in um, almost like what 18 plus years but um, looking back at everything we've done over the years mm -hmm. my first visit and then became second visit and I think I've done what 19 20 trips to, to Oklahoma I think a couple times I came twice or three times uh, because of my friends uh, Kay Mercer Bobby Mercer's family that I did yeah, yeah. So yeah, Oklahoma's become a family to me, and I know to a lot of us, you too, Jake. I know you uh, spent a couple of trips down there, and uh, I know it meant a lot to you. So I think it would just open up to folks just to share their experiences uh, with this exchange, because Anthony, you talked a little bit about how it started, which it was to be together and to have each other, uh, to hold each other up and be there for one another. And then, you know, for us to be able to go out there um, to Oklahoma as well that first year. Mike shared a, a clip from a CNN piece that was done on our exchange, um, I guess that first, that April was 2002. Right and, you know, just to see us, uh, you know, there and, you know, it was very emotional to be there because, you know, we were so many years away from our memorial and really just sort of getting in the trenches at that point about the challenges of, um, memorializing our loved ones, especially in New York City, prime New York real estate. And it was, we were really starting to understand the, the reality of what we were facing and the uphill battle that we were facing. So to be able to go to Oklahoma City, uh, John and Rudy, and to see how well um, you guys, you know, accomplished your mission to, to honor your loved ones. And um, it was just, it was such an amazing experience. And I was so glad that Mike found that clip because it was like, I got to see myself with all, you know, the hair that I had back, you know, 18 years ago. <laughs> no, that's great. No, I think all of us look a lot younger back then. Absolutely. Uh, for everybody on the call, uh, John Cole, uh, was godfather of Elijah and Aaron Coverdale, who were, was in the America's daycare center. Um, and I just showed John a clip actually that I found of him back in, April of 1995, right? It was the same, was it the day after or the, that clip that I just played for you? That was, uh, it, was uh, it was the the day after. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey Lenny. Hi. Lenny, how are you? Hey, how are you? Freedoms from Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Reverend Bill on the line too. He didn't put his name. Okay. Spot Reverend Bill. <laughs> so hey, and I see Rudy too. Yeah. Hi, Rudy. hey, Letty. <laughs> yep, I'm glad. Uh, Frank but, and Mary. Hi. But Rudy lost his brother, Captain Randolph uh, Guzman, Marine Corp. Um, and you know, I think the most touching part of the Oklahoma City ceremony every year 
Rudy, is that tribute that they do, obviously, for uh, for your brother? I mean, talk a little bit about that. That's the most emotional part for me when I'm at the chairs and they do that dedication. Um, I think that's just the most special part for me. Of the whole yeah, uh, they do that. Uh, they started doing that every year, and they said, as long as we're here, we're going to honor both Captain and uh, Sergeant Davis. And... Uh, putting out flowers and just a little quick salute to those two and everyone else that, you know, that got tragically hurt and killed there. So that's for everyone, not just uh, the Marine Corps office, but for for pretty much everyone. Very touching. I think everybody, I think, Anthony, we probably had about 100 9-11 or maybe more. I never counted how many people have uh, come down over the many, many years. Uh, Some twice, three times, four times, me like 19 times. Uh, <laughs> Nobody just, quite as much. I think Eleni's probably a close second to she's you. She's close, yeah, she's yeah. close. Uh, I missed Santora's, the, first, the first few ones I missed, but after this, that time. Yeah, yeah I know the Santora's, Santora's one Marina and Al were, Yeah, Maureen and Al came, and I remember one year, the Smile Retriever dogs, Karen and Mario. Oh, yeah. Oh, I missed them oh, so yeah. much. Uh, yeah. They drove, right, all the way from Staten Island to Oklahoma City. Uh, with the I didn't know that. that was always there with Diane Horning, and uh, that was the same year I think Diane uh-huh. came. And uh, I, I can't say one exchange is better than the others, they were all special in different ways. But I think just the way uh, the family we came together, a lot of us didn't know each other in the beginning of the, the opening or doing like what we're doing now in a room, and by the end, we became family, right? That's what was the most amazing thing within 36 hours of a group coming together. We were bonded. I'm sure if you guys can see, this is from the first exchange. I don't know if the camera is going to show it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bonded by trash. Bonded by trash. I put them backwards because I want to use bonded by trash and united in spirit. And yeah, I was going to say, that's the back of it. That's the back of it. But that was was our motto. I mean, uh, you know, and I still share that shirt. And, uh, you know, it's just something that I think uh, kept us all together. So, uh, and Jake, you were down there, I think, the first time, and you were how old? Because I can't, you're so old now, I can't remember you when you were there. Oh, uh, yeah, I was a baby, I don't really remember that one, hey, but we went it. back. <laughs> how are you? Uh, the one I do remember was the 15th anniversary, I believe, of the 20th. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, that was really special, and then just being able to go and remember it this time, uh, you know, I think that that definitely played a role in me wanting to do more and the Parkland thing we wound up doing. Oh, the uh, Parkland thing was amazing. But uh, best moment of the 15th anniversary was Reverend Bill sticking in a selfie. Uh, I think that was the highlight of the whole, right there, right, Reverend Bill? Yeah, he broke away from pulled the it group. off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Bill. Oh, but I remember that was the part we, we disappeared and he got a selfie with Bill Clinton. We, we took us to that. And uh, what we did in Parkland a couple of years ago, I think uh, most of the us on this call, we're dead uh-huh. years ago with Fred, and Fred was on my dad's show uh, a few weeks ago, and um, it was such so, such a amazing uh, for us to pay it forward and help them because you know that there unfortunately a lot more tragedies going on, and uh, it saddens me to see yeah. that every other day there's another shooting going on in this country. So for all of us to come together support each other and we had Columbine, we had Boston, we had Vegas, so all these communities together is one. That's what, that's what it's all about. Well, we need a lot of healing, Mike, and the healing. Great memories I want to share uh, for Rudy and John. I think you were my roommate, Rudy, one time. I know I had Reverend Bill as a roommate. The man- <laughs> I'm teasing you, Reverend Bill. But uh, <laughs> Rudy snores too, by the way. So he was <laughs> I don't know which one Wait, snores that's... louder, but uh, you Everybody guys snores. Can take, uh... <laughs> yeah, but... No, we had a lot of good times. I think uh, one also member, Gary Campbell, who we lost, uh, you know, um, about, oh God, is it about 10 years now? Gary was part of our exchange in the very beginning. Such a great guy. He lost his daughter and he had, um, I believe, brain cancer. Um, That's right. He was so, such a great uh, person. Uh, Martin Cash, a survivor as well, that was part of our group. Uh, many, many times, uh, Bald Paul Howell, who we call Bald Paul, but he was a uh, person I met on my first trip. And yeah. so we lost a lot of good people along the way, but I'm um, just glad that we've kind of kept the fabric of what we started together. And 
you know, I think a big part of the New York portion was really Mary and Frank, what you do, and also eating yeah. Cantor Fitzgerald. I know we were to go, we go to the memorial ceremony in New York, and, you know, obviously the one downtown, and then go to Central Park for yours or go to the other event at the museum. So either way, I think what uh, you, know, you put on and what uh, the, obviously the Cantor Fitzgerald piece of it, I think has always big, big, been an important part of the whole uh, September 11th uh, portion of our exchange for the, for the Oklahoma City folks. And even going up to the room, the LMDC room up there, Anthony, I know we've always brought them up there. Um, I think planning those exchanges every year was always phenomenal because I think we always learn something new. Like when I go to Oklahoma City to the museum, I learn something new every time. And I think our goal with the 9 11 Museum, you go in there, you learn something different that you hadn't seen the first time. So I think Oklahoma City was a model of what we wanted to be uh, to do in New York. And I think, Anthony, you took a lot of uh, inspiration. I think all of us did what we did up in New York from Oklahoma. Absolutely. We went back after that first exchange and we talked to the redevelopment officials here in New York about how within the museum you honored each person with their right. photo and you had those uh, those clear cases in front of each picture. And, you know, I, I really think that helped to serve as, as an inspiration for what ended up becoming the memorial exhibit because, because while we while we don't have individual art, artifact cases for each victim in that space, we do have all of their, the images of all of them. Yeah. So that was uh, definitely influenced the design. Well, that New York, Oklahoma connection too, I want to mention too, that when more Oklahoma had those tornadoes uh, back in 2013, uh, the Cannon for Relief Fund was led the contingent down there. And it was something I was there that, you know, I just want to say quickly, um, this is such a special opportunity to look at all of you and reflect on this 20 years later, 550,000 Americans dead, but here we are. Yes. God, you all have never looked more beautiful to me because I've prayed for your families to come through this virus and continue being the inspiration that you've been to so many, including me, through the years. Folks from Oklahoma City would come to our conference in New York City. You know, we always sat in a circle, and you were such an inspiration for us. I think you really gave the families a lot of hope and, and encouraged us. You know, looking at you, we could see um, how resilient you were and how you were able to you know, get through a horrible loss. And, you know, you helped us so much in guiding the memorial process, but, you know, even more so, I think, uh, to give that spark of inspiration to the families um, as we were commemorating the anniversary. And I, I just want to thank uh, each of you for that. About how within the museum, you honored each person with their right. photo, and you had those uh, those clear cases in front of each picture. And, you know, I, I really think that helped to serve as, as an inspiration for what ended up becoming the memorial exhibit. Because, because while, we, while we don't have individual art, artifact cases for each victim in that space, we do have all of their, the images of all of them. Yep. So that was uh, definitely influenced the design. I want to totally echo what Mary has to say. One of my earliest memories was attending Mary's um, programming um, on September, you know, on September 10th that she would, that you guys have and having and sitting around in the room with the people from Oklahoma City. Uh -huh. I think I actually participated in that exchange prior to even traveling to Oklahoma City for the first time. And I think it was participating in that exchange and meeting the Oklahoma City families and seeing sort of, you know, having them talk about, you know, where they were now, where they were then, as opposed to when, you know, where we were, and just seeing the progression, it did kind of give you hope that, you know, you are going to get through this, because it was still relatively early on, you know, and it was still like very painful. And it was, you know, you're sort of in a different place, you know, years down the road. Um, and you're able to cope with everything and hearing, you know, the stories from the Oklahoma City, you know, folk really, I think, helped 
And it actually is what inspired me to want to go to Oklahoma City. And I, I think it was after that that I, you know, talked to Anthony and said I was interested. You know, me and my parents went. And I think Anthony saw how I sort of just took charge on that trip, even though it was my first time. And <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did. But, you but did. I really, like, you know, I really appreciated, you know, Mary, you know, your, you and Frank and, and everything you did every year because I think you had a lot of great programming. And that sort of, what, you know, got me involved with Oklahoma City. And that's been a total help and comfort over the years. Um, I, you know, my, my connection with Oklahoma City was, was a little bit more attenuated than, than some of the rest of you, certainly Mary, Frank, and, and, you know, Lenny and Anthony and Mike. Um, I, I didn't go to the Oklahoma City exchanges. I mean, my, my backyard was so uh, entrenched in 9-11 and our 658 families that, you know, but I always um, spoke to Anthony and, and watched and learned and what you did at your memorial in many ways uh, influenced what we did at ours. And while it's a hard thing uh, to say and to remember, you know, we have uh, you know, and our and her unborn child at uh -huh. our because of you um, and your. That's right. Um, we would not have, I think, had the presence of mind or forethought at that point in time, um, where we were in our grief to even have thought of that. And it's so important. And it means so much to us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and a canter, you know, we have two women that that applied to, and, you know, I think of them often. And, um, and then when, when Anthony and Mike brought the Oklahoma exchange to our memorial service, um, in Central Park, being able to look out and see those families and to, you know, um, just it, as, you know, has been said before so eloquently, just to understand the resilience and to be able to see, you know, how you can survive this and how, even though they are slightly different um, traumas and tragedies, they're still the same underneath and that we have a real connection and a core and that we understand each other on a, you know, sort of on a visceral level that other people may not ever get or understand because you know, you can sympathize, but you can't necessarily empathize. And we all empathize. And for us in Oklahoma, um, you know, we said, you know, we, here's our opportunity to give back in a way that's, you know, meaningful for everything that basically you had done for us and the connection that was forged with us and how it was your firefighters who were some of the first on the scene in 9-11 and you know we didn't forget any of that and you know it was on our part it was it was a small thing you know to be able to just say hey look you were there for us and you continue to be there for us and now here's our opportunity to try to be there for you and you know and it was you know, with a, with a real sense of just um, gratitude that we could do that. And, uh, you know, because I think the overarching word that kept, keeps being used is family. And there is a connection between us and it is a familial feeling. And, and that's just how we feel. So, you know, when Mike said, oh, we're going to do this call, it's like, we, you know, do I, do I have the same standing at the table as those of you who have gone for years and years and years? No, you know, but do you have that standing in place in my heart? Yes, you do. I couldn't have done it without you because what you, your relief fund helped our organization to support the funding, you know, obviously doing what we did, flying families back and forth and flying Oklahoma City folks back up to New York. We could not have done it without the funding funds. So you're, Mark, you are a big part of uh, what we've done. And I can tell you, Reverend Bill brought a couple of the tornado survivors, uh, Amy Thompson Simpson, Shelley, and LaDonna to our program as well. And they were so grateful for the support, the checks, 
everything that was handed out that helped them in their time of need. And they had some uh, amazing stories. The one thing that what I learned a lot from Oklahoma City was how well in uh, times of tragedy, how family members and survivors and rescue workers had come together. Chaplain Poe as well. And Reverend Bill, you filled a role of Chaplain Poe for us in New York. And, from my, you know, yeah. Up in Edie, you know, when you all arrived in Moore, I had been there for a little while. But when you arrived, you brought all of the 9 11 families with you. You showed up with tangible help. And for me, it was watching 360. We were all on our knees after 9 11. Now you had been healed enough to come to the rescue of these people and more. Yes, you were very much there with us. Thank you. And Anthony and Mike, I don't have enough words to express my gratitude for what you've done in allowing me to go to Oklahoma City time after time after time. Mary and Frank, your organization that's just been a pillow for the families as they get ready to face that 9-11. Uh, Elaine, Rudy, I haven't seen you. You got a lot of nerve not showing up in Oklahoma when I <laughs> hug you despite coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you saved yourself. Uh, the 20 years, you know, of, of, you know, Harvey, Brad, everybody. And here we are carrying on. This is better than a Barbara Walter special tonight. It really is. <laughs> Oprah had nothing to beat this. Thank you very much. I'm... I think everybody summed it up really well. It was really powerful that time I went back after all those years and just got to meet people. And, you know, it'd been so long, but, you know, I just had kind of a bond with everybody immediately. And it's something that hasn't gone away with time uh, still here maybe five or six years, I think, since I went. But, uh, you know, I just feel like that bond is still there. And it was definitely something that helped me personally and helped me kind of uh, use my experience to help others in the same way the Oklahoma families helped us. So uh, it's just a special bond. And, you know, I can't wait to see you guys in person again. Yeah, I've known Jake. Well, so. He was a little little baby, right, Jake? You and Kelly. Uh, I know Margie yeah. Miller was supposed to be on tonight. I know she's traveling, so I know she was having some challenges. But that's where I met Jake and his family as at Margie Miller's uh, family center in Long Island. That thing, two thousand two, uh -huh. three, and it's hard to believe my daughter's uh, eighteen and Jake, you're a little bit older than her, but not by much. <laughs> so, it's incredible. But uh, hey, John Cole, you there? Still there? It's. Uh... You know, it, it really have uh, been uh, a uh, healing experience. You know, when you, the Bible talks about how you reach out and, and help someone else when you're in need and, uh, and you find healing yourself. And I uh, experienced that when uh, uh, you guys first, uh, first came here. Uh, to think that uh, some of the things that that uh, we had gone through, that you were really just getting started, and I could just look in the face of some of the um, uh, some of the people that came, and uh, and some of the thoughts that I had were, you know, we we were able able to we had a physical body to bury. And to think that I, I talked to one young lady that I uh, forgot her name. Um, she said she had been they've been married a year or so, and uh, and that morning of 9/11 uh, uh, was the last time she saw her husband, and I, I just never really. Really, I never really thought about that until she shared her story with me regarding, um, you know, uh, not having a physical body to bury, which makes it somewhat difficult to have closure. Uh, and uh, that was that that was uh, 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 very profound to me. 
and over the years, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the trips that we made to New York, and just reaching out and um, uh, sharing my story with, uh, uh, with with people that just came up and just started talking. And uh, like uh, Mike mentioned earlier about healing, that he he got a lot of healing from from just uh, interacting with uh, uh, people from Oklahoma and, and others. And uh, that's where I found a lot, a lot of healing. Uh, well, I'm still pretty new to Zoom and I'm not very good with this whole screen share, but I had a cool uh, couple minute clip of some photos. If I can figure out how the heck to do this, I know share screen and I'm gonna try this and bear with me if I do this right, I'm gonna play this. You, you tell me if I'm doing it right, because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it's going to be broadcast on CNN tonight, so make sure you... Uh... <laughs> yes, Rudy? <laughs>
was terrific. Very, very cool. Terrific. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, a little emotional watching that every time I watch it, but it's a lot of memories. It's like all those years combined and you put it together. How uh, you you make these connections and you reach out and, and, and people embrace you and 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 that's that's really where I found a lot of uh, a lot of healing. And I felt a uh, a calling to do all that I could in order to make sure that uh, uh, Aaron and Elijah was uh, um, uh, moralized in a way that uh, that we wanted that we wanted them to be, and in, in their friends, you know, each we thought they were in the safest place, you know, in a federal building. Mm -hmm. you know, with ATF on the on the top floor, and you had to go through all these doors in order to get in. I thought, you know, this is, can't be any safer than this. And um, uh, as it as it turned out, um, uh, you know, we were we were wrong. And uh, but we do find healing in in sharing and talking, and uh, and just telling our story. And I appreciate uh, each one of you, and I look forward to uh, interacting in the future. And uh, thanks to uh, to Mike and, and all the rest, uh, Anthony. You know, for all you all you guys have done, and and I want to keep this going. This is Elijah, and he's two, and this this is Aaron, he's five. Can you describe uh, I think uh, as the night went on, uh, hope became dimmer and dimmer. Precious kids that everybody loved. Last thing I, he said to me last Friday, they came in, he said, Miss Coffee loves me. Awesome Jagged Edge BMX bicycle belonged to five and a half year old Aaron Coverdale. In addition to riding his bicycle, he loved to watch and play Power Rangers. This cute Fisher-Price tricycle belonged to Aaron's two-and-a-half-year-old little brother, Elijah Coverdale. Elijah also loved to watch Sesame Street and Barney on television. These brothers attended the America's Kids Daycare located on the second floor of the Murrah Building. They were among the 19 children killed on April 19, 1995. The brother's grandmother and guardian, Janie Coverdale, donated these precious toys at the same time she brought other toys in for the boys' gallery of honor. There is no closure, you know. I've heard that in 2002 from Calvin Moser, who couldn't be on the call tonight. But Calvin uh, said that to me, and it really struck me, because everybody was telling me after 9-11, no, just get over it. It's like, you can't get over None of us get over 9-11. Uh, you didn't get over Oklahoma City. We learned to process it. and move forward but we always uh, take a piece of that day with us and that was the most important thing that I had heard was uh, that there is no closure but you guys had taught me how to take steps forward and that was really in small steps you know and uh, but it's just amazing to see the family that uh, developed over the years and the dedication from all of our participants uh, look one year uh, we had Jim Laritz, who was one of our board members, former Yankees World Series champion, two-time World Series champion. This guy drove. Uh, he missed his flight from California we booked for him, and the guy drove. I don't know how many hours it took him to get from Southern California to Oklahoma City, but he was there the day before I was there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was amazing dedication from a guy who just wanted to be there to support uh, what we were doing, what you guys are. So... That's the, and Reverend Bill every year. Uh, somehow, I don't know how he's done it every year, but he's been there. Oklahoma City is there with us at 9-11 every year. Um, it's not 9-11 without seeing Reverend Bill there uh, at the site. And uh, that's something that uh, I think all of us have just uh, have uh, had that common bond. And I just want to say how much I appreciate it as we're heading toward the next uh, five months and it's going to be uh you know as you guys go through oklahoma city through april 19th and then we start thinking about september 11th but i'm glad you guys are there for us i think we've always been hopefully there to support you guys and um give you a shoulder to hug or cry oh, whatever and you i think it's the reverse on 9 11 we need that support from you guys and what during our time so i think that's why it's an exchange and that's what anthony when he created that concept uh and i was so grateful to be part of it the first time and uh still grateful to this day so one of the yes 
Well, I'm going next week, God willing, and I'm going with all of you in my heart, and then on to Columbine from there, and then on to Boulder, and bringing your bringing your strength. So thank you. Because of that, and uh, what we did in Parkland a couple years ago, I think uh, most of us on this call were Uh down years ago with Fred, and Fred was on my dad's show uh, a few weeks ago, and um, it was such, such a amazing, uh, for us to pay it forward and help them because, you know, that there, unfortunately, a lot more tragedies going on and, uh, it saddens me to see yeah. that every other day there's another shooting going on in this country. So for all of us to come together, support each other. And we had Columbine, we had Boston, we had Vegas. So all these communities together is one. That's what, that's what it's all about. Well, we need a lot of healing, Mike. And the heel. I don't know if there's any closing comments. I don't want to keep everybody from their busy schedules on a Monday evening, but I thought just getting us together and doing this somehow, I know we can't be there in person, but uh, virtually it's like, I feel like everybody's here with me right now, although we're on a computer screen, but it feels like the same. And um, hopefully we can do this in person in New York. Um, I'll be there. So you know that, but uh, thanks for scheduling this and for all you've done over the years to keep us connected. We appreciate it. Well, I get my strength from you guys, so that's where it comes from. So you guys give me strength. So we're all, you know, thanks. And Rudy, good seeing you. And, uh, you know, Love oh, y'all. Love I'm still y'all. a Yankee fan. You're an Ace fan. <laughs> and, uh, we got to go. Uh, 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 right. Good night, everybody. We still love each other. <laughs> all right. Good thinking good of you, Rudy you. and John, next week and all the yeah. other families. So good okay. luck next week. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. So much. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good seeing you all. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining this special episode. And next week or next Dads and Daughters, we're going to have a special guest, uh, Doug Flutie, to be joining us. And uh, thanks for joining. And please keep uh, the Oklahoma City bombing families and survivors in your prayers.